What's up guys, Jason Wardrop here and in this video I want to walk through how to use Facebook ads if you're a complete beginner. I'm going to walk through all the different steps and show you basically how to go through and use it. So give you a quick tutorial on how to go through and make this happen. Now I've spent close to half a million dollars now on Facebook so I feel like I, I know a thing or two. Um, this, is, this is an old, old account you can see right here, Lifetime. Just a you know a little under six thousand. This was back kind of when I was testing, and then I made more of an official business account, and um, that's where I do most of my spending. All right, so that's just for me personally, my business. But then I've spent another I don't know, hundred thousand maybe for other clients. So we've really gone through and nailed down a lot of the different strategies. And obviously, there's always more to learn. There's always things that are changing with Facebook, and you need to stay on top of that. But with this, I want to give you guys a quick run through from A to Z. So right here, guys, just to give you a quick overall view, these, these are all of your campaigns, all right? And we're going to walk through, there's, there's three types of things. There's a campaign, there's an ad set, and then there's an ad, okay? So like campaign is kind of like at the top, and then you can have multiple ad sets to the campaign, and then you can have multiple ads in each one of the ad sets, right? So just to break that down, it's actually easiest to go through and start creating campaign to explain each one of the different meanings of, of what those all are. Because like you're probably like, okay, Jason, what, what the heck are those, right? So if we click on create campaign right here, all right, it's going to see, we'll start over. It says, what's your marketing objective? Okay, so there's a lot of different things here. And we need to choose the objective that best suits us of what we're shooting for, okay? So um, we've got brand awareness right here, consideration or conversion. So Facebook, they have so much data that they know if they're going to show an ad in front of somebody, they know if somebody's going to watch a video, like more likely to watch a video or more likely to like or comment a post. Like for me, I don't really like and comment on a lot of posts, but I'll click on a lot of links. And so they'll probably know, okay, I'll show Jason ads that are more traffic based of people. So traffic is basically like you want them to click to your website or to a blog post or something like that. Whereas video views, that's like posting a, vid a video on Facebook and you just want people to watch it. You don't want necessarily them to click anywhere. Engagement, that's just like um, clicking that boost post button on your Facebook page. That's to get people to like and comment and share on your post. And Facebook knows the people that are more likely to do that, okay? And right here, there's lead generation. That's using Facebook's lead forms, which we could shoot another video another day. Um, if you guys want a video specifically on that, um, just comment down below because I can go through and show you step by step. And the cool thing about this is it gets you their name, phone, email, address, whatever information you want, but it automatically pulls the information that Facebook has on file. So a lot of times you can eliminate a lot of the bogus information when it comes to lead generation, right? Now, messages. This is kind of a newer one, but this is really hot right now of just like, you know, they click, hey, I, I'm interested, the call to action is send message, and then it starts a conversation in your Facebook Messenger, okay? And I've seen some crazy, awesome results with Facebook Messenger. And then uh, conversions right here, this is using, this is diving a little bit deeper, and I've got several other videos on this, but using Facebook's Pixel, okay? So their Pixel is basically their way of tracking everyone that comes to your website, everyone that becomes a lead, all that stuff, which we can hit a little bit on that today, but we'll also, I've got I've got actually another video that I'll link here, uh, be able to show you guys how to actually make that happen, okay, and how to set that up and use it on your website. So these are all the different ones. So for this one, let's just say we're gonna go with traffic, all right? And this obviously is based off of your goals of what you wanna go through and do. I didn't really hit brand awareness. Brand awareness is just getting like a massive reach, getting like more exposure than anything, you know, and kind of like that in store visits, catalog sales. This is a little bit more advanced and it depends on like what type of business you're in. So I've actually never used those um, just because I'm not in that type of business. But if you're used, you're working with like a physical location, like store visits obviously are going to be huge or catalog sales. That's probably going to be related more to e-commerce, right? So let's just say traffic right here and then we can give the campaign a name. So we'll just say demo traffic campaign, all right? So come over here and just really quick back, I'll just show you, um, let's just click back right here. You can set a limit to the campaign saying, hey, I don't wanna spend any more than 200 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever, or 50 or whatever the number is, but the, I, I typically don't do that. I just kinda keep my eye on the campaigns and watch them. So we'll just hit continue here. Okay, so the campaign, so like we've got the three different pieces, the campaign, which is kinda like the overall 
um, the highest part of the pyramid, I guess. Then you've got ad sets where you can have multiple ad sets within the campaign, okay? And then the ad right here. So your campaign is the objective. Do you want to, to people to watch videos, traffic, get leads? What, what do you want to happen? Then your ad set, this is where it gets into the targeting of finding like what's the audience, like what's the demographic you want to target, what's your budget. You can see right here, they break it down. They've actually, they changed this about a year ago and they made it really simple to kind of see all the steps like your objective. Okay, now the, the tra okay, it's traffic. Um, who do you want the audience to be? Where do you want to be placed? Do you want to be on your mobile phone, on desktop, on Instagram, on all these different platforms? And then your budget, so it's like, hey, do you want to spend five dollars a day? Do you want to spend a hundred dollars a day? Like, how much do you want to spend? Okay. So over here, as we come down, and we can give this a name too. So we'll just say demo um, traffic ad set. And then you could, I, I typically would like at this point to just give it a name based off the audience, right? Which we don't know yet because I'm just kind of creating this on the fly. But it's kind of cool because you see like the potential reach of what you've got so far and we'll break it down You'll see how this number right here is 200 million how as we go through and break this down It'll shrink, but you're getting more narrow more specific. Okay, so When I'm running a campaign if it's if it's like a national campaign like all across like the US or Canada or whatever country you live in I like to get a few hundred thousand people in that campaign because Facebook works better with more data okay so like the bigger the audience the bigger it work the better it works however if it gets too big if it's getting to like three four five million um, sometimes you've got to like nail in your your target a little bit better if it's like a super broad market then great like if you're selling I don't know like uh, weight loss stuff because that's a pretty broad market but if you're like in more of a specific niche you probably want to stick around like the one to two million on the higher end right that's at least what I've seen but then if you're doing like local ads obviously it's kind of based off of how many people live in your town in your city right if like you live in Chicago versus I don't know like some small town in South Dakota right like you're gonna have a lot fewer people but you don't want to be reaching out to people in North Dakota because it just is not gonna be within that right demographic okay so come down here traffic I just leave this here Nice thing is some of the stuff you don't really even have to touch. It's it's not like it's super important. So offer, I don't do anything there. And then custom audiences, this is a little bit advanced, so we'll hit that in another video. And then for locations, let's say let's say this is let's just say this is a local ad, okay? We're running it for a local whether uh, we'll say a real estate agent just because um, that's I <laughs> work a lot in the real estate space and the mortgage space. So let's say okay, we're going to come down here and we'll say, um, where do we want to be in today? Orlando, Florida. Okay. So we'll type in Orlando, Florida. And look at this. It went from 200 million down to 2 million people right here. Now, what if I'm running a local ad, this location, with this drop down, it, it by default is going to say everyone in this location. But I typically would want to do people who live in this location. Okay. Because if it's like, hey, I just want people who live in this location. And that's good for real estate, but if you're doing like for a restaurant and you just want everyone in that location because if they're visiting, it doesn't matter if they're visiting, you want to be able to target them as well. Or you could do people recently in this location, so if they were there but they're not there anymore, or people traveling in this location. So like if you're like running an ad for more tourist type stuff, um, you could do that as well. So for this one with real estate, we'll just say people who live in this location. And then... You can see that that narrowed down to 1.5 million because Orlando is kind of a touristy spot, right? So now what we could do is we can go through and say, hey, I only want it with people in the current city, okay? So which that's going to nail it down to 880 thousand, or you can say, hey, I want to do more of a radius, okay? So you can go up to 50 miles or down to 10 miles. So just because this is a little bit bigger city, right? We can do a 10 mile radius, okay? So now we're going down. And as far as the age range, you got to kind of think of like, okay, your target demographic, like how old are they? Like somebody, if we're doing real estate, is looking to, to find someone that's looking to buy or sell a home, an 18 year old is probably not going to be in that demographic. So I typically like to go up to at least like a 25, 26, 27, something like that. And so you can see how you're narrowing down uh, this as well. You can go through, you can type in languages. It's like if you only want to work with people that speak English, or you could say, hey, 
I want to work. I know there, there's, it's a big Hispanic market in that area. So you could just say, hey, I want Spanish. Um, so you can kind of see it's 220,000 people. Or you can just say, hey, you know, I, I'll work with, it doesn't matter what language they speak. If they, they live in the U.S., they probably speak a little bit of English. So I'll just leave it at that. So I, I'll typically, just because I speak English, I'll just put that in. Now, guys, this is where it gets pretty cool right here, okay? The detailed targeting. Okay, so the detailed targeting, you could do some really cool stuff here. So um, what I like to do, you can go through and browse. You could browse by demographics. So somebody's education, okay? So education level, they've got a college degree or they've just high school or they're in college. They're in high school. They've got a master's degree. So you can get pretty like, and obviously this is not always something that you have to go through and choose. But sometimes depending on your ad you're creating, this can be really helpful. So it's just good to know some of these different things that are in here. Or financial, you can say, hey, I only want to hit higher income people. So people that are making over half a million dollars a year. Okay. Or I can target the lower income or like kind of like the middle income or something like that. Or saying, hey, net worth. Okay. Because if you got like a high value real estate property, if we're sticking with this, you, you probably like somebody that's only like has a hundred thousand dollar net worth might not be able to afford a five million. Well, they can't afford a five million dollar property. Okay, so that's kind of cool right here. And then also, I just want to hit some of these things because these are like what I like found some of these stuff, some of these things in here. I was like, wow, there's a lot of stuff you could do. So kind of want to just open up your guys' eyes and your mind to seeing some of the different things that we can do here. All right, so you can do home ownership, which is big for obviously real estate, mortgage. Um, you can say, hey, I'm looking for people that are first time home buyers, home type, life events, um, interests. You see like, okay, you, you want people like, there's one where, let me find this. There's one, oh, behaviors, I think it is, okay, where it talks about people's purchase behavior, right? This right here. So people that are like more likely to make big purchases online if you're doing like e-commerce type stuff, uh, see these buyer profiles, coupon users, that like it's crazy how much data Facebook has because Facebook not only has the data that you give them, but through Facebook's pixel, they can actually track what sites you're going to. They know what, what links you're clicking on, what ads you're clicking on. So they've actually got a lot, a lot, a lot of data on you. Okay. Cause some people, a lot of times are like, well, how do they know that I like, I like skiing. I don't like any of the skiing pages, but you know, maybe you're clicking on those, those ads or something like that. So they've got, I mean, I'm not going to go through all these, but they've got tons of things down here. Or you could just say, Hey, um, they're interested in real estate. You could just type that in. Okay, so right here, interests or behaviors, either one of these. The difference between interests and behaviors, interest is basically they, they've liked something related to real estate on Facebook. Behaviors is kind of like they've more acted upon something. like they That's more of like they click the link or something like that. So anyway, guys, you guys could get lost in this forever. I'm not going to dive in super deep um, more on this just because we've already, I feel like, hit that pretty well. So adding a connection type, this right here, I don't always really do this, but you could say, hey, I want them to be people who like, I want to, I want to just target people who've liked my Facebook page already. So it's like, that's kind of your warm audience. Or if you want to like expand a little bit, but you know how on some of the ads it says, Hey, um, so-and-so like one of your friends also likes this page. This is where you can go through and do that. So you can say, Hey, friends of people who like your page, or if you want to just expand and get new people, you say, Hey, only people exclude people who like my page because this is not for those who like my page, this is only for new people coming in. Okay, so now coming down, um, what we could do here, so automatic placements, a lot of times they have this here by default. I like to do edit placements. And just so you can see like all the different places we can have these ads, you can have it on the, the news feed. So this mobile and desktop used to be separate and now it's just one and the same. If we want to make it just on mobile or just on desktop, right here on device types, it says all devices recommended, which I usually leave it at that, but you can say only on mobile devices or only on desktop computers. Okay, so that's just something really quick there. And then um, as we're going down here, I like to just typically leave it on the Facebook news feeds and uncheck everything else, okay? Just because I've seen the best results with that. However, I just wanted to show you some of the different places you could have these ads, okay? So you could have it on their instant articles, which is kind of like a newer blogging type platform in stream videos, this is kind of like what uh, YouTube's already been doing, having like the streaming videos before a video. 
you know, right column. You guys have seen that on your desktop, top right. Lots of times you get cheaper ad space for that just because it not as many people click on that. However, it could still convert extremely well. Um, and then right here, this is where you do it on Instagram. Okay, Facebook owns Instagram. And so if you wanted to show on Instagram as well, you can say, hey, I want to show it in the news feed or at the very top on the stories. Okay, so that's kind of a cool little feature there. And then you've got all these different ones. You know, if you want to do Messenger and you say, hey, I wanted them to click and go to Messenger or you can actually have it uh, an ad in essence pop up in that person's Messenger box. Okay, which is kind of crazy, right? Okay, now just scroll down here, guys. Um, I, I typically don't really touch this right here. And then as far as the budget, you could do a daily budget. So I want to spend five bucks a day or a lifetime budget of just saying, hey, only want to spend $35, $100, $50, whatever it is. I typically just like to do a daily budget, okay? And you can start out at whatever number, whatever suits your budget, right? Now, if you have an audience of like 730,000, you can start at like a higher number. Like you could start te technically, you know, let's say 50 or $75 a day. I like to start normally like around 20, $25 a day if I have like a, a massive, massive budget. But if you're watching this video, you're probably more of a beginner. So if you start around like the five to ten dollar range, that's probably just that's perfect, right? So we come in here, and then this is this is something that's that's cool. Like what I like to do sometimes is when I start a new ad campaign, I like to give it the whole entire day. So like right now, I think it's like six a.m. on a Saturday. I I I, don't, I just woke up, I couldn't sleep, so I was like, I'm just gonna shoot a video. So. I like to get the full day and let it run so that I can kind of like see the whole day's data. And so like if it's um, if it's right here, so we say I like to start like maybe on a Monday, okay? And then we'll say we'll, we'll start at 8 a.m., okay? And then since we're a daily budget, well, you, you can have um, a start and end date and then still a daily budget or you could just say, hey, run my ad set continuously. But I like to kind of like have a start date right and so um oh that switched up on me so we come over here 8 a.m because then so if that's monday at 8 a.m on tuesday when i like kind of get to my ads and stuff around like 8 or 9 a.m i can see a full day's worth now really quick quick tip if you guys are only spending ten dollars a day I would give it probably three to four to five days before you go through and evaluate whether your campaign is working or not. Because sometimes it takes a little bit of time for Facebook to go optimize it and find the right people. And the more data they have, the better they'll be able to optimize it for you, okay? So despite popular belief, Facebook actually wants you to succeed because if you succeed, you spend more money with them and it's great for everyone, right? But at the same time, you got to have a good ad that that really is fitting with your target demographic, which we'll talk about ads here in a second. Okay, so um, that's kind of like what I like to do. So if it started on Monday from eight uh, at eight a.m., I could check it maybe that next Tuesday, just kind of get a quick glimpse of what it's looking like. But if I'm only spending ten dollars a day, maybe I'll wait till like Wednesday or Thursday to really determine if it's a winning ad or if it's it's not right. Okay, so coming down here, link clicks. I typically don't really mess with any of this. And that doesn't matter. It like doesn't matter what campaign I'm running. I just like leave it just because lots of Facebook's basic um, stuff is kind of like already set to where you want to have it. Okay, so then we'll come over here to the um, the ad section, right? And you need a business page, um, whether it's your personal one, your business one, or whatever. You need a business page in order to run ads. You can't run it from your personal profile. Okay, now. It, it's nice because it's super easy to go through and create your your own Facebook page. It's free, easy, takes like two seconds, all right? And then if you're also advertised on Instagram, you can connect your Instagram account right here, right? Now, the cool thing is, is if you have an exist, like let's say you made a post on your Facebook page and, um, and, and you want to use that, you can just click on use existing post and then you can go through and select one of your previous posts right here. Okay, now if you go through and you're creating a new ad inside of Facebook Ads Manager, this is what's called, some people call it a blind ad. <clears throat> and the reason why it's called a blind ad is because this is actually not going to show up on your Facebook page in the news feed. Right? So there's the two types. You can go make the post on your Facebook page 
and then use it as an existing post and use that in your ad campaign or if you create it inside here it actually does not show up and there, there's pros and cons to both some people don't want it to be like if you're excluding people from your Facebook page it's only a special offer special something for people that don't like you your page yet then you could do that um, sometimes it's nice to have it on your Facebook page because then you get some free organic exposure some likes and comments that you don't have to pay for and it looks like those posts sometimes look a little bit more natural it's not like a straight up ad because they're gonna look a little bit different like an ad inside of ads manager you're gonna have like the headline the sub headline it's gonna like be like I mean you're just gonna be like your ads that you see every day whereas in a post on Facebook it's not necessarily gonna look as much like an ad and so you can kind of like almost I guess not trick people but like make them think it's not an ad it is still will say sponsored at the top but those are some quick little differences there now We'll hit these really quick just because this is a tutorial for beginners. I want to give a full um, rundown of everything. It's like the carousel. This is, we'll just kind of show they've got like the little demos right here. This is where you can go through and um, you can have multiple little different images or pictures. So like this is kind of nice if you're in e-commerce and you've got like different products that they might be interested in, right? Of like, hey, we got this or this or this. And then you can just come down here and change these different ones. Um, just through here you can add it it could be an image or a video one thing I've liked to do in the past with um, when I'm get trying to get more clients is I'll do a carousel ad right like this but also have different testimonials so I'll like go and add four or five testimonials like hey this person this happened or this person this happened this person this happened or like real estate you could potentially feature multiple listings that you have right where I like to typically just do one listing if I'm a real estate agent marketing my business but that's an option there you do a single image ad which I'm sure most of you guys have all seen um, just it's just one main core image the single video same type of thing but it's just a video instead of an image um, slideshow I actually have never really used slideshow but it's like kind of just a <clears throat> you can see like it says create a looping video add with up to 10 images okay and then um, collection right here I've, I've never used this as well so I'm not gonna like go speak to it I'm not an expert on it feature collection of items that I'll open into a full screen mobile experience okay so that, that could be cool okay but starting out I would highly recommend starting out with a single image or single video these are just the two I guess basic simplest ones to do so let's say single image so you can go in here upload an image you can see their free stock images or browse the library I'll just see um, I don't even know what images I've got well she's like the core the main, the popular profile picture I always use on everything. Oh, so if it looks like this, guys, there's a tool that's called Canva, C A N V A dot com. And we'll just hit this really quick because this is important. Um, like this ad right here, the same thing was happening. Like this lady's head was getting like cut off. Okay, just kind of like how my head's getting cut off. So what I did on Canva is you can go through and they've got all of these. Um, dimensions that are already pre-built for you okay so like Facebook ad a YouTube thumbnail this is what I use you make all my YouTube thumbnails um, this is the old Facebook ad old dimensions Facebook cover Facebook post Instagram post like all these different things so I'll just hit this and then what I'll do is I'll upload you can just upload the image it makes it really easy to upload okay and let's say this is the image right here okay so now if I go through and I throw it in right here and we can make a little background Let's see what the background should be. Maybe this cool house. Ah, that's probably not going to fit that great. Um, I like this house. This is my background, actually. Okay, and obviously this is probably... Anyway. You guys can see it's, it's pretty easy. You just like drag and drop everything. And then you can kind of like move you around and all that stuff. And then um, you can even type text. Okay, so test add. We'll change that to be white so they can see it a little bit better. You can change the font. Okay, we can just maybe throw this up in the corner. And and, and also really quick, guys, um, if you have more than 20% text in your Facebook ad image, you're going to get disapproved. Okay, so I actually typically like to have as little text if no text as possible. So this is actually typically what I do on a YouTube thumbnail. 
because it doesn't matter. But on, on something like this, I like to like maybe have like maybe it's like, hey, and obviously this is not like what I would do for real estate. I've got other strategies and stuff like that. But let's say if you want to throw an image of you or somebody in there and have a little background image, and then you let your your headline and subheadline do the talking. Okay, which we'll show you guys here in a second. Now we can download this and upload it into Facebook Ads Manager. Let's just for this one, I'm just gonna browse the library. I just want to show you guys that really quick. Um, add images. We'll just use something right here that we've already got in place. I will just use this. It's a it's a home, right? Okay, so then we'll throw in the URL. Like let's say for this example, we're just doing it to Google. Obviously, you're not you're gonna put in the URL of your your landing page, and, and I, I'll hit another video on, on that, but you don't want to send it to your main website or your blog. It You're, you're going to waste a lot of money. You're not going to generate any leads, but obviously it just depends on what your goal is, right? That, that campaign objective up here. So if you just want people to read your blog post, then yeah, you could just send them to your, your blog, right? But um, if you want to generate leads, you want to send them to a landing page, which I'll, <clears throat> I'll have another video on that, but that's kind of where we want to go there. So the text right here, this, Facebook's made this pretty easy, guys. You just kind of go through, okay, what's the website you want to send people to? What's the text? You could say test, text, um, copy right here. And this is just like your main Facebook post, like what you want to say in there. You can make this as long as you want. You can make it like a long, long story. You can make it very quick. And what I like to do here, just as this is a tutorial kind of for beginners, like letting you know how I like to write my, my, my copy. <coughs> Excuse me guys. So I like to go through First thing I like to do is call out my audience Second thing I like to do is do something to pique their interest and to give them kind of a call to action and then add some value and then another call to action so like for example um, Let's say um, Orlando homeowners Okay, so that's calling out my audience. Okay, so I'm targeting people in Orlando and if you're a homeowner and I can go through back in my interest and say, hey, I only want people that are homeowners. So I can get specific. But then if, if you live in Orlando and you're a homeowner and you see Orlando homeowners, that's going to pique your attention, right? That's going to be like, oh, hey, this is for me. Um, you can say, are you looking to sell your home in the next three to six months? Okay, so now that's like weeding out the Orlando homeowners. Okay, if you're not looking to sell your home, you're gonna keep scrolling. You're done. I'm, I'm not talking to you. Um, so you're looking to sell your home in the next three to six months, and then, and obviously, this I'm just creating this on the fly. Um, you could say like, <clears throat> I like let's say I've got somebody looking to buy a home. Okay, I have a family of three looking to purchase a home in the. Um, I don't know Orlando that well, so we'll just say blank. Area. So like if you were wanting to get like specific to like a, a community, you know um, Who is hoping to purchase their dream home within the next few months? Okay, and then we can say like um, full details click here And then we can have a link so we're gonna have the link so if they click on this image right here that's going to take them to the the site, but also it's sometimes nice to add the link inside this copy too because this is reading it. A lot of times people read um, ads or anything online with their mouse. I don't, but a lot of times people do. And so if you're they're going through and they're like, oh, full details, click here. They, it's just easy to click, right? And so you can add like sometimes it could be as simple and quick quick as that, or you can add a little bit more. Um, sometimes I typically just leave it at that. So like calling out the audience. And then of those people, hey, are you looking to sell your home next three to six months? We're weeding it down, and then we're adding like it's like a little value add. Like, hey, like if you're looking to sell, I've already got a family of three looking to purchase a home in this specific area. Now, obviously, you don't want to like make that up. You want it to be like legit, but you want to be some value add there to get them to be like to pique their interest of like, okay, well, what separates you from all the other real estate agents of like, why would I want to sell my home with you? You know what I mean? So then. Um, for the headline, this is where that Google spot is going to be. We could say, are you, um, yeah, we'll just say, are you looking to sell your home? Okay, and that's going to pop up right there. And then we could say, hey, call to action, 
learn more. We've got several ones right here. We can say no button. I don't want it to look like a, an ad a ton. So we're just going to say, hey, just like are you looking to sell your home or watch more. So this is kind of depends on like what your goal is, right? <clears throat> a lot of times I will typically do just learn more just because like it, it kind of is like it's not – Something of like, hey, download now or donate now or buy now or sign up or something like that. That's a little bit – people put a guard up whereas learn more. It's like most people are fine learning a little bit more about something, right? Okay, so we'll just – actually, I didn't even click that. Learn more. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, and then I, I typically don't hit this. And then this display link, you can change that if you want. I typically just leave it. And then the news feed link in description. So we can say test um, copy right here. That's going to pop up down here as your subheadline. This is the mobile view. You can see mobile news feed. And this is only going to show up on your desktop news feed. So if we go through and we scroll and hit this, this is going to show all the different ad placements that we chose in the ad set level. Okay, So we chose news feeds. It's going to show this one right here. Um, this is another view of it. Okay, And then this is uh, what it's going to look like on your desktop news feed. So I can see test copy. And say um, we can say Orlando homeowners looking to sell in the next three to six months. I usually do just like a little shortened version of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so it says Orlando homeowners looking to sell in the next three to six months. Um, we have a family looking to buy something like that, and this is like learn more. Okay, so just like a quick so like they're just scrolling through and they kind of skim past all this when they see this. Are you looking to sell your home? Land homeowners are looking to sell in the next three to six months. Um, we have a family looking to buy. And they're like, oh, what's this all about? Learn more. They go to, to your website, okay? And then down here, all this URL parameters, that's super advanced stuff. You don't need to mess with that. Honestly, um, I don't really mess with that even still. And I've spent a couple thousand dollars a day on Facebook. Um, so Facebook Pixel, leave that, leave this, I'll leave all that. You just hit confirm, good to go. Okay, so some other little last tidbits of things. If we come over here to Ads Manager, um, this is, so like this is gonna be, we'll say leave this page. Okay, so this is taking you back to this area. You can filter through stuff by lifetime. You wanna see everything from the whole lifetime or you can see how your campaign is just performing today or last seven days, lots of times. Last seven days, you got to keep in mind, it doesn't show the day of. Okay, so that's just going to show the last seven full days or last 14 full days. Lots of times I like to look at it at the last seven days. Okay, and see what it's like. So you can see I'm not running any ads. And then you can kind of mix it up and say like, okay, I want to see it by performance or delivery. So delivery would be like how many people are being reached, right? or engagement, how many like um, reactions, comments, shares, links, uh, like all the different information there. So you can kind of like um, go through and scroll through what by what you want to see it. And then you can see here, you can see your campaigns, ad sets, and your ads. Okay. So if you want to go through and say, hey, I want to get, I want to nail down on a specific, like let's say this foreclosure leads, this is only going to show the ad sets that are within that campaign. And then if we click on this, it's going to just dive deeper. So like you got campaign you clicked on. So it says one selected ad sets. There's only one ad set in this campaign. We click on this. So it just dives deeper. Now we're at the ad level. So there's just this one ad. And if you're like, crap, I want to like see what it looks like. I can't remember what it looks like. We just hit this and we'll hit preview and it's going to pop up what this looks like. Okay. So we can kind of see what this looks like. If you want to see what it looks like actually in the newsfeed, you're going to hit, hey, click on this. Let's hit Facebook post with comments. And this will pop up what this actually looks like. So if you wanted to like, like it yourself right there, you could just throw in a like right there. And uh, this kind of, it switches between what profiles or pages you have on your account. I've got a lot. You probably don't have as many as me. Okay, so those are some different things. And then also up here, this hamburger menu, and you hit all tools. This goes and kind of takes you in different um, aspects. So like you can create different custom audience. So like um, I've got a video on this actually where you can upload your all of your contacts into Facebook. And it'll match their name, phone, and email with the name, phone, and email that they have on file with Facebook, which is kind of cool. Facebook pixels, which I've got a video on that. I'll add it here as well on tracking. 
so that's kind of cool so if you guys I'll add these videos like if you guys click in that top section where there's like the little circle with the eye um, I'll have some of those different videos here so you guys can kind of explore some more of these different things um, and then this is where you, you know set up like the billing and all that the, the like the admin type stuff and so anyway I'm not gonna hit all these things this is just quick um, obviously it's a little bit longer tutorial but anyway, if you guys want to learn something specific, this is something that I didn't cover in today's video. I hope I covered a fair amount. Um, but if there's something that I didn't cover today, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Also, if this was helpful, um, go ahead and hit hit like and let me know. Um, I, I want to bring value to you guys and help you guys up as much as possible. And if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I try to launch a new video every single day. Um, I do my best with that, but um, I launch new videos weekly for sure on how to generate more leads, make more money, and grow your business. Whether you know you're a real estate agent, mortgage broker, if you're creating your marketing agency, or you want to start, you're an entrepreneur. Like it doesn't matter what business you're in, but I will go through and show you how to go through and grow things with Facebook, with social media, and how to go through and grow your business. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today, and I um, hope you guys all. What's up guys, Jason Wardrop here and in today's video I want to give you a quick Facebook ads tutorial. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to set up your Facebook pixel. In 2018, if you're a complete beginner and have no idea what the Facebook pixel is, we're going to cover what it is and how to set it up and how to go through and access it inside of your Facebook ads manager. All right, guys, so before we jump onto my computer and I show you exactly how to set it up and how it's used and all that stuff, I want to just quickly explain what a Facebook pixel is, all right? So a Facebook pixel is basically Facebook's way of tracking everyone who visits your website, your landing pages, people that become leads, people that purchase items on your, your website. It's just their way of tracking all the people that are on Facebook, right? So there's one Facebook pixel per Facebook ads account. So the pixel, the reason why that has that name is because way back in the day, what they used to do to be able to go track people that visit different websites is they'd make a small, small image that was one pixel by one pixel and they'd throw it on the website, all right? And then every, it was so small that you couldn't even see it but every time somebody went and loaded that image, that one pixel by one pixel image, they would know that that person visited that website and so the pixel would fire, so it would track that person and they would know that somebody had visited that website. Now it's not an image anymore, but the name's kind of carried on just over time and it's still used as pixel, so that is the Facebook pixel. It's just basically Facebook's way of tracking everyone, right? So with that said, let's jump onto my computer. I wanna show you guys exactly where to go inside your ads manager to access it, how to create it if you guys are brand new, and then how to go through and use it with your different websites and landing pages. All right, guys, so here we are. I just created a brand new ads account to show you guys exactly how this works. So to access the pixels, what we're gonna do is come up here to the ads manager, this little hamburger menu. You can come down here. It's got some frequently used base tools right here where we go to all tools and we can find it under a measure and report and we just come down here to pixels, right? Now, another way to easily access it is just if you're from anywhere inside of Facebook Ads Manager, you could search your business right here and just type in pixels right there, right? So we're gonna type in pixels and this is gonna pull up a page where it's gonna say, hey, create a Facebook pixel. Now, this is a brand new Facebook Ads account. And just a quick reminder, you only create one Facebook pixel per ads account, right? You're gonna use that same pixel, that same little HTML copy and paste code, which I'll show you guys here in a second, on all of your websites, your landing pages, everywhere that you're gonna use your Facebook pixel, right? So what we're gonna do is click on create a pixel right here, and you're gonna see this pops up, and it's just gonna walk you through step by step. It's very easy. So we can say test account pixels name. You can go give it your own name if you want. And we're just gonna hit create right here. All right, so it's gonna take a, a second or two. All right, so now that we're at this point, it's gonna say use an integration or tag manager, manually install the code yourself or email instructions to a developer, right? Now, if you guys have a developer that's perfect, um, you can go send this on to your developer, but they've really made it super simple and easy that you can go through and use this on a lot of the websites, landing page builders and all that stuff that are used today, all right? So what I'm gonna do is click on manually install the code yourself. And what we're gonna do is scroll down I usually skip this number one and I go to number two. Okay, so copy the entire pixel code and paste it into the website header. All right now, this works if you're using WordPress, lead pages, click funnels, um, Arsenal, like whatever you're using, this is gonna go through and work for your business. All right, so this right here, you just hover over and you can see copy code, copy code to clipboard. 
Okay, now just so you know, I have no idea what any of this code means, and I'm sure you don't either. But all you got to do is just go here and click on this. It says copy to clipboard, and so you just copy that, and now you go paste it into your website builder or your landing page builder, your funnel builder, whatever you're using. All right, guys, so I'm just going to show you a couple of quick examples here. Um, this is very commonly used click funnel, so I just want to show you guys where to go through and put the Facebook pixel on your um, your funnels here so there's two places to do it you can either do it each page individually in your funnel by going in here to edit page and then once you get into the website builder here you come up to settings and then you could go to tracking codes and then you can see right here if we go back here it says paste the pixel code at the bottom of the header section just above the head tag okay so if you come over here this is the header code you just copy and paste this right in there okay that's all we got to do and then we just hit save we come out here hit save and we are good to go or the other way if we want to just have it go throughout all of the pages of the funnels in just one spot we're just going to come over here to settings and then we're going to go to the head tracking code right here we can even make this bigger right here and we can just paste that in right there okay so now we just come down to the bottom we just hit save and update settings and this is great because obviously this one right here you can see it just has this one page but if you got multiple steps in a funnel if you got like five or ten different steps you can have you could just go paste it that one time in this settings section and that same Facebook pixel code is going to be used throughout all those different pages all right so I want to show you guys really quick one other use case this is inside of the Arsenal MKG software which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with as well if we just come in here to the landing page builder we just click on edit and then we will come over to there's a spot where we can go paste this code as well so what we're gonna do is just come over here to the page section we're gonna go scroll down to advanced and then you can see right here I've already got a Facebook pixel code in there but I could just go through and paste this new one in there or I could go through if you want to have two in there which I don't recommend having two Facebook pixels and that's you have two Facebook pixels if you're using multiple ads accounts right so like I said there's only one Facebook pixel per ads account I highly recommend just using one ads account just to keep everything together and the nice thing is is Facebook will use your pixel to go through and learn and get the data that it needs to to make your ads perform even better all right so if you're going through and you're trying to generate leads and you're saying hey this is the pixel I'm using they'll use the information from that pixel all the data that's come through and they'll go find more people that are like the people that have already become leads right or if you're going for sales they'll go through and use your pixel data to go through and find more people that are relevant and just like those people that have already become sales right so we come over here you just you paste it in the header tracking code area and then right there here on this one you also have to do it on the thanks page so we just click thanks the page section and then this header spot right here as I showed you guys before was already in there we just hit, we paste it in there and then we hit publish and we are set and we are good to go okay so now jumping back over here to the Facebook Ads manager just a couple of different use cases I want to show you guys as we're going through and using this Facebook pixel code so we can do a lot of things now with this but I want to show you guys two different things the first one is going through and creating custom audiences so what that means is that we can have Facebook anyone that hits a specific page that the pixel is on of our website or our landing pages or funnel whatever it is we can say hey I want you to make a custom audience of everyone who visits my main website or my blog or um, that becomes a lead through this funnel or purchases this product so in order to do that what we're gonna do is come back over here to the search spot right here and we're just gonna type type in audiences okay so when we type in audiences it's gonna pull up an audience page and we can go through and say hey we want to create a custom audience Okay, now the cool thing in here is you can go through and this is not necessarily using the Facebook pixel but you can upload a customer file so like let's say you've got tons of people's emails phone numbers addresses whatever you can upload that into Facebook and create that custom audience which we'll go through and we'll hit that in another YouTube video um, but what we're gonna do with the Facebook pixel is create one with website traffic okay so we're gonna click website traffic and the cool thing is is when you have the same pixel on all of your sites you can say hey I want to create an audience for all my website visitors anybody who hits a page that has my pixel installed on it I want to go through and create that audience so we can come in here and we can say we can max it out even I think it's 180 days so you can see that it goes back to 180 days so the last six months so anyone who has hit my website in the last six months right so we can say all website 
visitors. So we'll come through, we'll create this audience, and you guys can see right here it says all website visitors, it says populating. Obviously, this is a brand new ads account, this is a brand new pixel, so it's probably gonna be a, a little bit too small. But typically, it's gonna take about a couple hours, even maybe 24 hours to go through and fully populate. All right, but that doesn't mean you can't go through and start creating ads and start using this custom audience. Okay, so this is one of those types of custom audiences that you can use, or you can go through and say create an audience, a custom audience, and then say, hey, I want to do only people who visited specific web pages on my website, right? So it could be like, hey, only people that visit this blog article, or people that visited this page, like my pricing page on my website, or um, you know, a specific page in your funnel. All right, so this is the page right here inside of ClickFunnels that I went through and I put the pixel on. So if we want to say, hey, I just want to create an audience with people that visit this page. We're just going to come over here and click on this, and we'll just grab this URL right here. Okay, then we'll come back in to the um, where was it? We'll come back in here, and so we'll we'll just click right here. We'll paste the URL right in there. And we can say the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever. And this is kind of cool because you can really dive in deep with your retargeting. So if you say, hey, I only want to retarget the people that have seen this page in the last seven days, you can go through and do that. So like, let's say we only want to retarget people who have recently seen one of our landing pages or our, our blog post right here, okay? So we can come in here and see, say the audience name is blog post test demo page. All right, so now we're gonna go through create this audience and this is everyone who's visited this page right here within the last seven days we can just go through create this audience and this is gonna go through and um, create that audience that we can now use in our ads as well and this is a very custom audience which is great for retargeting which with retargeting ads which I'll shoot a video on that in another another day um, you can get your cost per lead down dramatically I'm seeing about 20 25 percent cost per leads compared to what I'm getting with cold traffic all right so one last cool thing I want to show you guys that we can do now with these audiences now we've got the Facebook pixel set up we've created the audiences and now what we can do is go through and create what we call look-alike audiences so a look-alike audience is kind of exactly what we is just said right there right it's someone it's an audience of people that look just like or they're very similar their profiles are very similar to people of an audience that you've already created all right so What's cool is you can say you can go through and you can create a custom audience of everyone on your order confirmation page So like everyone that's purchased a certain product of yours You could say hey, I want to create a look-alike audience so people that are alike the people that already purchased my product Okay, and if Facebook will go out and they'll go scan all the profiles of everyone that has a Facebook account and They'll say okay. These are the people that look most like people that have already purchased your product All right, their their occupation their uh, maybe marital status Maybe their income maybe their search behaviors or their online purchase behaviors and they'll go through and they'll match that So now you can go show your ads to people that are more matching your demographic All right, so in order to do that what we're gonna do is come over here to create audience And we're just gonna come down instead of custom audience. We're gonna choose a look alike audience Okay, so now we choose a source and we can go through we can say hey all website visitors the one we just created or we can see there's a lot of the different pages that I've already got on my account associated with that so let's just say or we got the blog post test demo page so let's do hey we want to create a look like audience of everyone who is like people that have visited this blog post page so let's we'll click on this we can say a location and I'll typically start out by doing just the United States and then we can go through and say hey We want them to be within like 1% variance of that that group Okay, or 2% or 3% 4% 5% and so about a 1% look-alike audience is gonna get you an audience of about 2 million people you can see right here It's this estimated reach of 2.1 million people all right And typically that's all you really need to go through and do and start out with and you can go through and scale your ad campaigns dramatically with just 1% look like audiences, right? Then you can break it down in the future and go, hey, I want a 1%, this is zero to 1%, one to 2%, or two to 3%, or this is, hey, this is everyone in the 3% range. So as you go through and change these up, you can see how these audiences grow. And obviously, the profiles of those people are not as similar to those people that became leads or that purchased your product already, but it just helps you go and find a wider, more broad audience. Okay, another thing you could do right here is come down here to show advanced options 
and you can actually create multiple audiences at the same time so you can go through and create a 1% 2% and 5% audience all at the same time all right now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stay with the 1% right here we're gonna come down and click create audience so it's gonna create the audience and then once again it's gonna say updating audience it's gonna populate that and go through and so we're ready to go through and use that all right guys so that is it that is how you go through and set up the pixel that's how you go through and set the the custom audiences up and then it, to get back to the pixels like we said all you do is go through and type in the search business the pixels right here okay and you just come in here and they're always changing what it looks like right so they're always changing the the, the user interface so if it doesn't look exactly like this play around with it a little bit try to find that exact little copy and paste code that we use but then now that we're back in here we can see the test account pixel right here we just hit set up pixel and then we just come back here and it's, we're right back to where we started right manually install the code yourself come down here to number two copy the entire pixel code and paste in the website header click that now we go and copy it into click funnels lead pages arsenal wordpress wix wherever you want to go through and use it all right so guys if you guys found this video helpful go ahead and like this video if you guys want something more that you're, you're unsure of still on the pixel if you have a question make sure you guys leave it down in the comment section and i will be able to make sure that i answer your questions about the facebook pixel especially here in 2018 because facebook is always updating the facebook pixel and its use and how you can go through and use it for your business so make sure that you go through leave a comment like this video if you guys found it helpful and be sure to subscribe to the channel where I launch a new video every single day showing you how to grow your business, generate more leads, and make more money. All right, guys, so thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the channel tomorrow.